Hi, my name is Chris, and today we're going to figure out how to laser cut chocolate. Keeping our creations from falling apart is going to be another story. I started by getting a bunch of different types of chocolate. My intention was to find out which chocolates cut best, but as you'll find out, that didn't exactly go as planned. In the order of how well I guessed that they would cut, I got plain old Hershey's chocolate, white baking chocolate, three different types of regular baking chocolate ranging from milk up to dark, a bar of 100% cocoa chocolate, and then some fancy chocolate. The fancy chocolate is a coverture chocolate that is tempered. I wanted to try tempered chocolate because it is a higher melting point than regular chocolate and I thought that that would help limit the melting when laser cutting. My original goal was to try to cut chocolate that was three millimeters thick. This would be a bit of a sweet spot because there are a ton of projects that you can find online for 3mm thick materials and you could potentially just directly use them with the chocolate when laser cutting. So I started by laser cutting and assembling a mold that would help me create flat 3mm sheets of chocolate. I assembled the pieces that I cut with a hot glue gun and used wax paper on the bottom. Once I made the molds, I put the chocolate into the molds by first weighing out how much chocolate I needed simply microwave the chocolate to heat it up until it was melted, then pour it into the mold and flatten it using a palette knife. I went through this process for each of the chocolates until all of the tempered chocolates were in the molds. To temper the chocolate, I first used the seeding method. To start, I heated up a pan with water on low heat with the chocolate over in a bowl. You want to gradually heat up the chocolate to 45 to 50 degrees Celsius so that the crystal structure of the chocolate is entirely broken down. Then cool down the chocolate using chocolate that is already tempered, which helps seed it and adds back in the crystal structure that we want. Once the chocolate was cooled to between 31 to 32 degrees Celsius, it's ready to be used. I made a larger batch of tempered chocolate than the others because it's easier to temper larger amounts of chocolate since the temperature will not fluctuate as so much. You want to work fast because tempered chocolate hardens very quickly. And as you can see, the first time I didn't quite work fast enough to completely flatten the chocolate. But it'll be fine for testing purposes. And finally, the laser cutter. Using the extra large batch of tempered chocolate that I made, I started cutting squares at varying power and speeds until the cuts were successfully going through. My thinking during testing was that we wanted to cut as fast as possible in order to minimize the amount of time that the heat had to spread through the chocolate and this would shrink the curve of the laser, which is the width of the material being cut. I started getting some amount of success when I used multiple cuts instead of just one. And with this technique, I decided to try cutting a little house and assembling it with a tempered chocolate. I also tried a couple of the different chocolates as well, including the white chocolate, but found that even though it cut through, it was too soft to handle and assemble. So after all that work setting up the samples, I was really only going to look at the dark baking chocolate and tempered chocolate, which were the ones that cut the best. The edges were not clean, so I had to use an X-Acto knife to scrape off the extra chocolate. This was the tempered chocolate, and I was hoping that it would handle well, but I found it starting to melt in my hands when working with it, though I did have warm whites in the room. Tempered chocolate shouldn't melt in your hands at room temperature, so my best guess at what happened is that the laser cutting brought the edges of the chocolate out of temper, making the edges more susceptible to melting in your hand. We've got some room for improvement. Now I'll quickly run through my other unsuccessful attempts before finally coming up with the reasonably workable solution that I found. For my second attempt, I simply tried to make the chocolate thinner. This time I used a mold that was 1.5 millimeters thick instead of 3. And while it did cut through better, I found it more fragile and susceptible to melting when handling it. During assembly, this time I used a syringe with melted chocolate to help glue the house together. All in all, an improvement from before, but the thin chocolate was even harder to handle, and the results still weren't that great, so on to the next idea. For my third attempt, I tried making sheets of chocolate without a mold. Since laser cutting the molds was a bit of a hassle, I wanted to see if the quality was comparable if I just tried to flatten the melted chocolate between two sheets of wax paper. I found that doing this had the advantage of holding the chocolate in shape when the laser cutter cut through it. It basically helped keep the melted chocolate from deforming. The wax paper also protected the chocolate from directly contacting any surfaces of the laser cutter. So while I'd hesitate to call this process food safe, at least it makes it safer. 
I also moved from the house model to a miniature plane model. I found that there was some variation in thickness of the material, but it didn't affect the model as badly as I feared. So while the method didn't improve the cutting quality, it didn't seem to make it any worse either. I called it a win and decided to not use molds for the rest of my attempts. During my fourth attempt, I found a much easier way to temper chocolate if you are using chocolate that is already tempered. For this method, all you need to do is gradually microwave the chocolate until all of the chunks are just melted, and then you can reshape it into flat sheets. For my fourth attempt, I tried a larger model. The fine details were problematic with my other attempts, so I thought that scaling it up might help. This time I chose a model dinosaur. Initial signs were promising. The general outlines of the pieces turned out pretty well. The main problem I had here was that the joints where the pieces were supposed to connect were not cutting well. It looked like even though I was doing multiple passes, the chocolate was still pulling back into the portion that I was trying to cut and welding it back together. So that when I went to pop out the cut portions, it would break the piece that I was trying to remove. For my fifth attempt, I tried to address the joint problem by cutting multiple outlines. I was hoping that removing more material would reduce the amount of chocolate that could flow back into the cuts that I was making. Unfortunately, this didn't help around the joints. For my sixth attempt, I finally pulled out the nuclear option, adding a thickener to the chocolate. Through my testing, I found that the baking chocolate cut slightly better than the tempered chocolate, while the tempered chocolate was slightly easier to work with when assembling because it didn't melt as easily. Baking chocolate already has a thickener in it, so I decided to test what the minimum amount of thickener I needed to add to get a clean cut, and then try that with the tempered chocolate. To test adding a thickener to the chocolate, I added starch in amounts ranging from a quarter teaspoon up to four teaspoons per 50 grams of chocolate. Once cooled, I laser cut the pieces to see at what point the quality started improving, and it was during testing that I finally stumbled upon the solution I was looking for. I found that instead of doing multiple cuts quickly, I got cleaner cuts by cutting slowly. This was counterintuitive to what I originally thought, and I believe this works best for two reasons. One, by cutting slowly, the laser is burning the edges of the chocolate starch mix, which causes the burned edges to harden and prevents chocolate from flowing back into the cut. And two, any chocolate that does immediately flow back into the cut will be pushed back out by the laser because it's moving slower. Armed with this knowledge, I was ready to start my final attempt. During testing, I found that the minimum thickener that got clean cuts was one teaspoon per 50 grams of chocolate. And when laser cutting, the settings I used for my 50 watt laser cutter were five millimeters per second at 20% power. To assemble the chocolate dinosaur, I moved to the garage because it was cooler. I originally used a syringe with chocolate to help weld the pieces together, but found that the chocolate was cooling off too fast in the syringe, so I switched over to a toothpick instead. It was a pretty stressful process, but I made it to the end with a complete chocolate dinosaur. Until it fell over. Now that I had experience assembling it, I decided to try it one more time and see if I could get it to last longer than 10 seconds. During my first attempt when I assembled the legs, I didn't widen the stance very well, and so it wasn't very stable. I made sure to fix that this time. For this attempt, I made the model 25% smaller because I originally made the joints of the dinosaur for 3mm thick material, but found that the chocolate sheets that I made had a tendency to be about 1.5 to 2.5mm thick, so I could afford to shrink it a bit, and I also thought that a smaller model would hold it better under its own weight. The second round of assembly went quite a bit smoother, though I found that the smaller model was more fragile, so shrinking it didn't actually help me. In the final stages of assembling it, I had one of the legs break on me. Instead of starting over, I decided to try to weld it back together using chocolate, and this actually worked pretty well for me. The dinosaur actually did break for me about 10 minutes later because it also fell over. Sadly, not while being recorded. So if someone else were trying to make it, I would recommend probably making a chocolate base for it so that it wouldn't tip by itself. I could have tried one more time, but decided that two attempts was enough, and I wasn't going to learn much more from trying again. So, what did we learn? When preparing the file that you will cut, be aware that there is a limit to how small that you can cut the pieces. The smaller the piece, the less detail that you can cut, and more of the piece will be out of temper, which means it will be harder to work with when assembling because it will have a lower melting temp. The dinosaur that I cut was about the limit that I could work with with any reliability at all. Be aware of lines that are close to each other, as heat from the laser will melt an area and can affect how the other lines will cut, 
For example, the teeth in the mouth of the dinosaur were pretty melted because of all the lines in close proximity. When preparing the chocolate to be cut, wax paper works great for creating sheets of chocolate as it helps you flatten it and also serves as a decent protective buffer when laser cutting. It also helps hold in the shape of the chocolate when laser cutting, but it can be a pain to peel off. Tempering the chocolate doesn't help when laser cutting, but it does help when you handle it afterwards. The easiest way I found to create sheets of tempered chocolate is to have chocolate chunks that are already tempered and then microwave them until just melted, which will keep them tempered. Adding a thickener like starch is basically necessary for laser cutting. This increases the viscosity of the chocolate and will help produce cleaner cuts. I found that one teaspoon of starch per 50 grams of chocolate was about the minimum that produced clean cuts for me. And in general, the darker the chocolate, the better it will naturally cut. When laser cutting the chocolate, somewhat counterintuitively, I found that cutting slow worked better than cutting fast. I believe this worked because it burns the edges of the chocolate starch mix, preventing flow, and any flow that does get into the cut is pushed out because the laser is moving slow enough. When assembling, the edges are out of temper and so it needs to be treated with care. Assembling in the cold environment helps with this. You can use melted chocolate to help weld pieces together. And if a piece breaks, you can try to weld it back together using melted chocolate. And a final important question that should be answered is how does it taste? If you're eating along the edges, you can taste the burned parts, which reminds me of burnt chocolate chip cookies. So while not wholly unpleasant, the laser cutting does degrade the taste of the chocolate. So does it take a lot of effort? Definitely. Will the results be perfect? Probably not. Is it worth doing? It's up to you. But now you know how. Thanks for watching.